Peyton Pritchard evidently left Patrick Beverly hanging post-game as the Boston Celtics don't have time to be friendly. Four 20-point scores, seven players in double figures, and a scrappy effort down the stretch despite Tatum getting tossed before the final quarter fueled the Boston Celtics to another W, albeit against a beat-up Philly squad. Don't forget, Boston didn't have KP in addition to not having their best player when it mattered most. To make up for that though, Derek White's all-star caliber campaign carried on as Bald Mamba was a game-high plus 20 while scoring a team-high 21. Al Horford's vintage fourth quarter defense saw the man clamp up like a man possessed. Drew Holiday's team high six dimes to just three turnovers on a night where the Jays combined for just four dimes and ten turnovers was a precautiousness at point guard that Boston severely lacked in years past. Having won ten of their last twelve and becoming the first team to reach 15 wins, stick around for a full breakdown of Boston's continued NBA domination and a lot more that trust me you won't want to miss. But just 9.7% of you are subscribed subscribed, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Also, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. So JB got the Celtics cooking by blitzing the passing lanes four seconds in, reading Pat Bev's body language like a novel, all in one motion collecting his knockaway before setting the tone with a one-handed UC Berkeley hammer. Between tween and hezzy combo get Tatum the first step in semi-transition right here, and those two plays we just looked at from Tatum and Brown contributed to 44 opening quarter points. That's the second highest scoring first quarter in a game by any team this season. The 44 opening 12 minute tallies match what Boston did exactly a month earlier against Indiana. This half court set is directly from the basketballplaybook.com's 22-23 Celtics playbook. A double fist action with Tatum creating as the one sees the five and Horford first faked the screen on the opposite side of the four and Hauser before actually initiating the action by stationing on Jason's right next to the four and Hauser. Hauser pops, Tatum hits him with the behind the back while Al fills out the action by rolling to the hoop as Sam drains the spot up. The active hands-on defense were massive early and they turned into direct buckets on the other side. Brown's reach, activity, and timing rack up his second steal of the quarter, leading to Delano Banson gathering the outlet and pitching it to White as the trailer. And further display in Philly was struggling to control the rock without Tyrese Maxey. Derek would Jose Alvarado style sneak up behind Pat Bev, allowing him to pull off a simultaneous steal safe from going out of bounds and assist the JB. Brown, Hauser, and Cornett crowd Covington at the basket as Cornett's volleyball taps collected by Banton who one-hands it to Brown and Jalen slices around Corkmaz with a pristine hop step and lefty finish. It's obvious that left hand is improved if you've been watching Brown throughout this year. In terms of Jason Tatum's ejection on the play that triggered him, this was a legal guarding position from Covington before a bit of a flop from Robert. Also, Jason illegally leans into the flying by D'Anthony Melton, who still barely gets a piece of him. That was a good call in my opinion, but Tatum was heated. Speaking on the ejection, Tatum said, They were ready to throw me out. I definitely didn't get my money's worth to get thrown out of the game tonight. Missoula would state regarding Tatum's ejection, I think that type of passion and caring about it, I'd rather see that than nothing at all. With the C's down three to open the fourth, same double fist action we looked at earlier, this time takes place with Pritchard operating as the traditional one, Horford popping as opposed to rolling like he did last time, and instead two-way contract center to Miyash Keita as the roller, who after Pritchard isolates Harris, proceeding to place a one-handed hierarchy and lob, springs up for the throwdown. And Keita's given Boston nice insurance with Porzingis being out. The most recent reports on the health status of Porzingis, by the way, who suffered a calf injury against Orlando midway through the third quarter and hasn't played for the last three games, or that he hasn't practiced, but has been on the court, making his status for Monday's quarterfinals matchup in Indiana up in the air. Back to crunch time though, and while Peyton Pritchard's had an off year in terms of three point percentage, this stop on a dime deep range bomb from the TD Garden logo with that Devin Booker-esque release of his should give him more belief. Crucially keeping it a two point game with under 730 left, taking how Horford slows down his strides while getting back in transition right here, getting the preoccupied Harris thinking he's wide open under the basket. Al then speeds up his strides and lines up the chase down, then pops right back up for a second block on Harris. Beastly. 
this double screening action, unlike the two double fist actions we looked at before, have both bigs popping as opposed to just one, and Prime Spurs Dynasty-esque body and ball movement develop from it. Horford pops out for the retrieval, instant swing, pick and pop for Hauser, then he gets the swing from Hauser, pump fakes, drives baseline to draw three, and kicks it to the corner to find Holiday. That's just beautiful stuff. Luke Cornette's big body pick right here makes contact with Harris, freeing up Jalen for the top of the key, Jay in the clutch. Brown would draw the trap out of his next pick and roll before sublimely dishing out of that double with a floater entry to Horford in the pocket, who pivots into a post up and drop steps through Covington. Horford would, however, seal the game with his defense, shuffling up desperately, getting thrown off balance with a cross, but flying back to make this a pretty decent contest on Pat Bev to force the brick. But it was the all-business crypto scammer who had the last say in closing it out, as several Sixers get caught ball-watching and PP just slips right back door. Both Pritchard and Horford are showing you the value of Boston's depth, as specifically Horford stepping up into the starting five for Porzingis has been season-altering. The Godfather is one of Boston's most important players, but doesn't get enough credit. The man's screen setting, IQ, passing chops, communication, floor spacing, and versatile defense displayed in this vid can get overlooked amidst the Celtic hierarchy. But if you had to pick one, which quality makes Horford most effective in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video's commenter shout out. Top 5 commenters by the end of the year earn free NBA merch of their choosing, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Not Kevin, who says Indiana is a we can't guard you, but you can't guard us type of team. Boston is a we can guard you, and you can't guard us type of team. Boston wins by 11. Appreciate every take. Thanks so much for watching. DFlow signing off.